and uh, they must stand the test. And that test is, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Well, a special welcome to all of you all across Jamaica, to our listeners on love101.org. All That's the issue today on The Rock. But before that, here is Steve's rant and rave sharing with you what's on my mind. Well, you know, for, for several months that we've been doing this program, I've been really talking about the roads in Jamaica. And I, you know, I kind of, I'm really, really disappointed because several years ago when I was with Love TV, every morning that we had the morning program, or every week at least, we brought in somebody from the National Road Safety Council. And that year that we did that program, the the um, number of deaths on the road went down. So I was really hoping that this year, I've been on Love FM, this is one of the big stations in Jamaica, and we've been talking every Tuesday, probably about 10, 15 or 10, 10, 10 about the roads. But guess what? The executive director of the National Road Safety Council, Paula Fletcher, she's mourning the fact that there is no target date set for the implementation of the long-awaited Road Traffic Act. Um, she says they, the regulations are expected in 2021. And uh, her pleas were made on the very day that the Road Safety Unit of the Ministry of Transport and Mining released a crash update for the period of January 1 to December 8, showing that the figure for this year is 402 deaths up until one week ago. Not good news. In the unhappy news borne by the report, the road safety unit revealed that vulnerable road users, pedestrians, pillion riders, motorcyclists, and pedal cyclists have accounted for 65% of the 402 road users killed in crashes since the start of the year. So I've really, really been asking us, you know, Put the phones down when you're driving. Keep your eyes on the road. Don't drink and drive. Because what we're seeing is that it's not just those who are driving who are meeting in accidents, but we also see that the pedestrians, the pillion riders, the motorcyclists, and the pedal cyclists have accounted for 65% of the 402 road users killed in crashes. Now, according to the unit, um, they revealed that the deaths had occurred from a total of 357 crash crashes, up to last week Tuesday, and of the vulnerable group members who died, 130 were motorcyclists. And I, I get so scared sometimes, I'm turning right and here comes a cyclist. Um, we've got to find a way to make this work in Jamaica. 83 were pedestrians, which means we're not looking at the people on the road. We don't even see the pedestrian crossings. And 30 were pedal cyclists and 18 pillion riders. So I really want to encourage Jamaica. We have uh, two more weeks in the, in the year. Let us kill. Let us kill the the killing of the people on the road. Let's let's bring it to an end and call it a day. No more. Um, got news this morning. I was up about one o'clock and I saw on, in the paper that um, uh, another entertainer. Uh, I won't call his his entertainment name, but his real name, Leroy Russell, was held overnight. Um, and once again, it's a firearm issue. Um, I really want to encourage the police, you know, in, and and um, I don't know the circumstances, so I can't call him guilty. But if the police are saying that they found a Glock pistol in his vehicle or on his person, we've got to encourage justice in this country where somebody who's found without a license for a weapon has to face the penalty for the crime. There are too many guns on the road in Jamaica, and we want to make sure that that ends that we no longer have this kind of mess where guns are taking over our country. Wrapping up our little chat this morning, um, I want to talk about the fact that the Inter-American Development Bank study has revealed that Jamaica leads the Caribbean in the number of inmates who were armed with weapons when they committed a crime. It goes back to what I just talked about. Why are they inmates? Because they had weapons that they shouldn't have had. It is not during killings that the high percentage of the inmates have strapped themselves. 51% um, of non-homicides, the report said, 
involved weapons, while 63% of homicides involved weapons. And the study said that a total of 56% of all crimes committed by inmates involved a weapon. So and not crimes committed in prison, but crimes committed that made them inmates. So the way the story is written in the paper is not very, not very good. But the fact is, we've got to talk to our sons and our, even our daughters. I see, I see people with knives in their sides still. And we've got to say to Jamaica that this is not what happens because if you're going to be, if you can't handle pressure and you can't handle dealing with a problem, uh, don't walk with a, with, a, with, a, with a weapon. Because the problem that's going to take place is that when trouble arises, instead of trying to negotiate, instead of trying to communicate, instead of trying to talk through things, the problem that we find here is that people go for a weapon. And so um, these weapon things, the, the guns and the knives and all these things have to go in Jamaica. Well, that's all the time I'm going to have on the on the wrap this morning. Uh, as far as a piece of my mind, just sick and tired of all the murders, sick and tired of all the weapons, and sick and tired of all the, 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 the murder on our roads with vehicles and bikes and everything else. This is Christmas. Let us not take life. Let us do what Jesus, let's give life, give love. Take your time and drive. Take your time and look after yourself because the life you save in driving it may be somebody else, but it may also be your own. So that's the wrap for Steve. And you can send in your, your, your messages throughout the program. I'll make time, even though we're going to be talking about all the big stuff, we're going to be speaking with Miss Carla Dunbar, Reverend. I don't know what they call her, if, she, if they call her uh, pastor, sex, or whatever else. But she's the one that's going to be talking with us today about the unequally yoked. And that's going to be coming up in just a few minutes. But you can send in your WhatsApp messages or even call right now if you want to talk. 968-8327, 968-8328. Uh, and send your WhatsApp messages to 9973125. And uh, I'm sure Miss Nadine, Auntie Nadine, will give a read in the next three or four minutes because um, all of these debts, all of these debts can totally be avoided in Jamaica. How many Jamaicans that are here with us today will not be with us next year. Let's talk about it. Uh, and and, and it's not, we're not talking about natural deaths. We're talking about a death, a death on the road that does not need to take place. A death that happens because of an argument and somebody pulls out a knife or a weapon. Those things need to go. And that's what we're talking about right here on Love 101 on Steve's Rant and Ray. So thank you for joining us. Um, Let's hear what you have to say. And I'm going to go to a break. We're going to come back. And if you do have anything to say, I'll hear from you. But when we come back, we're going to start talking to Miss Carla. And we're going to talk about making your relationship work, why it's not working, and why you shouldn't go forward in some relationships. Wow. Maybe you're planning to get married. Listen up. We'll be right back here on The Rock. Whatever your mood, Quartz Optical has a wide range of stylish frames for you. Enjoy frames as low as $360 weekly and pay nothing until March 2021. Get single vision lens and frame combo starting at $9,999. We also have contact lenses. Plus, look out for 12 deals of Christmas. You can chat a new appointment online at QuartzOptical.com. Whatever your mood, we've got a frame for you at Quartz Optical. Value you can see. Offers end December 31, 2020. Conditions apply. Beyond the Dawning, Eye of the Seer, the book exposing the realm, interactions with angels and demons, an encouragement for your soul. Beyond the Dawning, Eye of the Seer by Dr. Loretta Sewell Drummond, available at the New Testament Church of God office at 51 Eastwood Park Road, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday, 876-398-4495 or 356-7922. Also on Amazon, Kindle, and in paperback. Get your copy now. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security is advising our valued customers and clients that the services at the St. James Parish office may be limited or delayed due to internet connect connectivity issues. 
The service provider is aware of the issue and is working assiduously to resolve it in the shortest possible time. Persons wishing to access the services of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security can call 876-952-2327 or 971-4193 or 940-4415. You can also visit the neighboring parish offices to utilize the ministry's full range of services. Yeah, we I'm apologize for the I'm inconvenience really caused. This is Love 101. Yes, yes. Welcome back to The Rock. And um, this right, is... Right. Pastor Steve Blair. And today we talk about unequally yoked. But before we jump into that discussion and introduce our guests, let me say a special good morning to you, Lady Nadine. How are you today? Hi, I am doing good today. Doing good today. Um, we have uh, just a minute. We have one comment, but it's about the, the upcoming topic for discussion. Um, so I don't know if you want me to go ahead and play that one, but that's well, well, maybe I'll use that to jump into the conversation with Lady Carla. I mean, I see her on the other camera in there and she's all ready for this. So let's hear what this person had to say. Good morning, Auntie Nadine and the rest of panelists. Hello, I'm here of an equal yoke. It narrows down to if the woman is a Christian and the man is not a Christian, or the man is a Christian and the woman is not a Christian, then classified, classified it as an equal yoke. But as for me, it won't or will still be Christian. I go as I go as see him church. I know still and you, you know still an equal you. All right. And okay. <laughs> well, I got what she's saying. And um, just before I introduce our guest, um, Owen Bellinfanti on Facebook, in response to um, what I was sharing earlier regarding all the murders says, good morning, the answer for your question is so simple. The answer is in the station and it is love. Um, certainly um, that, that issue love is gonna be a big one for us today because if we love each other, we'll be able to communicate, we'll be able to do a lot more than we're doing. And that's why we brought in our very special guest today, someone who can identify with all the big talk, all the big things, and that is, Certainly, our very, very, very special guest, Lady Carla Dunbar. I mean, sometimes I wonder how she does it. I mean, um, the, do you still pastor in Portland out there somewhere and live all the way up there somewhere in some St. Andrew Hills? Good morning, Lady Carla. Good morning, Ero. And um, currently, I'm in Portland because I'm in quarantine. Oh. Um, so I still have a home in Portland. My, I have another home in Kingston. So I, yes, I pastor in Cavaliers. No, St. Andrew, I'm not Portland anymore. Okay, okay. I've been to Cavaliers. I've been up there, met several people up there. So welcome to the program. And I know this topic about unequal yoked, I'm going to pull you everything out of you today <laughs> because we need help. Jamaica, uh, we're falling apart um, in our relationships. We're falling apart inside the church. And just like the lady said a while ago, they can even go to the same church, believe the same things, but still are on two different pages. Give us a tease, because we're going to talk for about eight minutes and then go to the news and then come back with the real stuff. What, what's happening in terms of this issue and Paul writes about unequally yoked. Is it just an unsaved and a saved person not coming together, or is it much bigger than that? Um, I, I, I like the fact that they use the word unsaved and not necessarily unbeliever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But that too has a context, right? Um, 
and an unbeliever could very well be. And I know Paul writes in the context, um, speaking to the Corinthian bridges, not to get themselves entrenched um, with other religions, other persons, so that they are taken away from the love and devotion of their God. Because you have to remember, they were holy for other gods. Yes. Back then, right? So Paul was really warning them about that. So I wouldn't come to say he was not talking to Christians, marine, marine, marine non-Christians, right? Or unbel or unsaved. Um, so that's the context, of course. But uh, I certainly have something else to share on the matter. It is always good to marry a Christian, right? Um, someone who believes in the same faith that you believe in, someone who is following God, because that's two of you going in the same direction or supposed to be on what the lady said just now two of you serving the same God, right? And it ought to make life so much easier. The word ought to is on the screen. Yes. <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm going to hit hard from early. Mm -hmm. um, we're pastors and, and, and certainly uh, we oversee and, and, and look after what we call our sheep. Mm -hmm. um, it's not unusual in the Jamaican climate to have a sister in the church come and say, Pastor, I can't find a man in the church to marry. <laughs> and, and, and so they start looking outside. Um, have you had those situations? And uh, I know we're not going to say that everything that we're going to say is 100% because some situations can work. But mm -hmm. have you had those situations? And what do you have to say to some of those people that are looking at that right now and saying they can't bother? To wait on somebody to come in the church or xyz i will i will still maintain that uh, um this is the this is god's way he really we are living in god's permissive will and not necessarily divine god really wants us yes to all follow after him to love him to devote ourselves to him but we're in a real world right and i'm not saying that you know um you should go the way of a fool but yes many persons have come to me with similar situations. And uh, I have been advising them in the same way that I believe that most of us think for a long, long, long time, until probably about four or five years ago, I had this client who came to me, senior person in her over 60s. And uh, she had a similar situation. She had been in the church since she was a teenager. All the persons that has been attracted to her have been unsafe persons. By this time, so she has not, she has not given in to any of them. She is now in her 60s, retired civil servant, still unmarried, because she has not given in to any of them, and none of the Christian brothers saw her, perhaps, as somebody. And so she comes on, she said, so this other person at this stage in her life, after over 60, is interested in her again, but is yet unsaved. What does she do? So she said she had seen me at her church some years ago, and she decided that she needs to come and see me. While talking to her error is when the Lord brought two passages of scripture to me that I have known them, I have utilized them all along, but never looked at it this way. And the first one would be 2 Corinthians 7, 14, where again, it's the same, the context, but Paul, he's saying, talking about the sanctified wife saving the husband. And Paul says, you know, if, if you're a believer, if you're a believing wife and, you know, you're married to an unbelieving husband and he doesn't want to go and he wants to live with you, keep him. And if you're a believing husband and you have an unbelieving wife and she doesn't want to go and she's willing to live with you, keep her. Because how do you know that your expression of your faith will not save him or cause him to accept what you know accept? Right? And so on and, and that premise, and then he brought First Peter 3, 1 to me as well in the same session with the lady. And this again, this is now Peter talking in this in the context of words, right? And he was talking to a yeah, first century woman and all of that, right? And they would question the authority of their husband because they would accept the Lord, Jesus Christ, and their husband had not. Yes. And, and Peter giving them the, the, the advice because he's talking about submission to authority and he says the same thing to them submit to your husband whether or not he's a christian 
Because wow. how do you not know that the expression of your faith, your obedience to God, will not win him over instead of you trying to preach to him when he is the authority figure? So that opened the whole new world for me in terms of my understanding, not that I'm showing out the, the, the first um, advice, not that I'm throwing out the first context to say, do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. But this here, this here is, 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 is us getting another, another, another view on things that it can actually happen. If you are, if you are, if you are, if you are adamant in your obedience to Christ, if you are faithful in serving him and your spouse is unsaved. And I, I witnessed that in my own life. Yes. Because as a pastor, I was pastor and had an unsaved husband. Really? Yes. For, for 10 years, my husband was unsaved. And I was doing the same thing. Errol. I was, I, was, I, was, I was preaching to my husband. Every time I came home from church, I'm telling him something else. I'm telling him. Okay. Okay. I'm telling him. Every, I was, I'm preaching one, to my husband. What, what, one second, Pastor. Yes. Because you're you you disappeared, so I lost you for a few minutes. Okay. So you so you said you're you are you are you were you started as a pastor and you are married to an unsaved man. Yes. Well, that and must have been I, that must have been awkward for you. It was very awkward because it is the same community that I'm pastoring. We live in. Remember, it is the same community that I was unsaved in, then got saved, right? Then became a pastor seven years later. My husband is still going to the bars and the parties and the own robins and all of that and still being unfaithful and out there. And I used to come home and do the same thing. I used to come home and preach him. I used to come home from church and tell him, where in hell is reserved for him? I used to nag him about the word. And one day the Lord, into this very house I'm sitting right now, the Lord said to me, stop preaching to the, to the man. Those were the words. Stop that. That's what I heard in my spirit. Stop yes. preaching to the man and live the life of virtuous wife. Mm. That's it. And I'm saying to God, how much more, more virtuous can I get? I'm a pastor. What do you mean by live the life of a virtuous wife? Yes. So, you know, I, always, I argue with God and then I go back and relent. And then I go to the scripture and I read the virtuous wife story and I'm like, what else do I do? I mean, a darning socks, a cooking meal, a cleaning, what else do I do? And then the Lord started to show me just some little attitude in myself that I, you know, could change rather than this preaching to him. And it is when my action started to show my husband Christ in me rather than show me up as Christ. I believe it was my, hus my, my actions that won my husband over to the Lord. Because I remember oh. when he knelt before me and it was out of a situation of unfaithfulness um, error. And he, he knelt before me and he said, Carla, pray for me. And I'm like, no. And he said, Carla, pray. And I said, why should I pray for you? Who's praying for me? And the third time he said, Carla, oh God, pray for me. You're a pastor. Wow. And I led him into the sinner's prayer. I don't even yes. know if my heart was fully in it, honestly. Because, because I'm a woman and I'm hurting, right? My husband was unfaithful and I'm hurting. And I led him into the sinner's prayer. And, and he asked me to go with him to the young lady that he was unfaithful to. And he said, oh, Lord, look how this man is looking for trouble. And I went with him, held both their hands, and I prayed with them. It was my action that won over my husband. It was when he saw how steadfast my faith was, even though inside of me I was burning up and never felt much like, like I should be doing all of this thing. But I was doing it because I fear God. And the Lord had told me to go on a fasting the week previously. And it is at the end of my fasting that my husband came and knelt before me. So I see this being acted out in my very life. I see 1 Peter 3, 1. I see 2 Corinthians 7, 14. I see the sanctified wife. The faith of the sanctified wife. You well, know? I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you right there because <laughs> I'm getting messages on Facebook like crazy. Carol Peter says, good morning. This is going to be an interesting program. Um, Elsie Knight, who's always here, she goes, welcome. This Pastor Dunbar Dale, this is in, going to be interesting. Then she comes out and she says, I'm not married. I'm getting proposals from other denominations with different beliefs. I don't accept because the Bible says two can't walk unless they agree. And Perrin says, I'm really loving what is being discussed right here, right now. Ladies and gentlemen, 
you can put your comments on our Facebook page on Love FM or WhatsApp 9973125 because right now we're going to go to the news and we're going to come back and get deep into things them with the lady, the right reverend, the honorable doctor, Dr. Sex, Dr. Love, Carla Dunbar, right here on Love, FM, Love FM's The Rock with Steve Blair. You're tuned to Love 101 and the time in love, it is 10 30. It's Carla. Yes, sir. I'm not even going to play the news, but I was calling to tell you a long time, don't see. And obviously, you know, we were we had a mutual friend, and so it was kind of easy there. Hello, good morning, and welcome. But to listen, our mid morning news. Update. I want to go as deep as we can go Blair, because I'm about transformation. So, as we see, people are writing already, and they're saying that they're being spoken to by people, to Christians, but from different denominations. So, I do want to look alleged irregularities at the national different forms of unequally yoked beyond just would have been dealt unbelievers, been unbelievers, but Blair. also. However, beliefs, ways of life, um, religions. Of right. You know? no, that is where, that's uh, where I would go because I'm from yes. this. And when the Lord, when, when, when the context of unbelief, but that's why I'm glad you said unsafe because there's unbelief versus unsafe. Because the person cannot be, not, he can be a believer, to believe in the same God you believe in, but you're not yet coming to that God in faith. Renato Adams is considered yes. one oh, yeah. because most accomplished and a controversial. So when we come back in about three minutes, US I'm going to give a, a, a full introduction of you and then come come right back into the discussion. No Remember to um morning morning Reverend 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 <laughs> um, remember to be good United that we're on live on human Facebook. rights day. Oh, I've been saying it. Daddy, no, you've been you haven't been using the word Facebook live. Yes, I did. I think, twice. I think it's a phrase that I want. Okay. Of four men in crawl. Okay. Sorry, I never heard it. But, uh, That's fine, darling. Because I, I read the messages from Facebook also, and I said it. According to the health secretary, yeah. Matt Hancock. But, um, Hancock. London Good morning to all of you that are on live. Facebook that are listening to the discussion. Love you all. Good morning, Miss Sandra. Beginning tomorrow, um, as infections continue to rise rapidly in the capital. Hancock added that a new variant of the virus may be to blame for the spread. He said officials are assessing the new strand, but stressed there was nothing to suggest it was more. So, um, to cause Rev, serious yeah. disease. I have a Marlene on the line That's also who is saying that she, um, secretary also said she says there, the she accept the Lord before. She, well, she have up to stay with her. Okay, so she got married before she got saved, also. So, we have those different situations. But I want, I'm going to start back with your story. Look here, Errol. I have these situations where. I they live together or and, and one of them got saved. I just had the other person college. and yes. then get to the room and that is how sometimes I win the entire family. Will be and, the and then you also mentioned the earlier United States. How, let's talk about how approval, difficult it was for you to yes, accept him and to lead him because college, because a lot of men I talk to tell me why they don't come to church is because of the wife and the, a lot of her. men to fail male pastors you don't know that a lot of men yes. to male pastors yes. has been given they're taking them wife from them and will yes and, and that's why I don't have church seven days a week <laughs> you know the, the first time I cut out Sunday night services and came on his exit a husband begged his wife to stay home with him. And, and, and she, she said no. She said no. And she met in an accident and came back and apologized to me. I said, no, go apologize to your husband. He asked you to stay home with him. I don't keep son and I don't do son and I try. You have to do family time. And the national family life is a business package. And marriage is what I do. I have to ensure that family time is given. So towards the end of, of our discussion, you can talk about that. But we, we want to hit on all of these issues and the effects. All right. Don't miss the Alive Bible Challenge this Wednesday at 3 p.m. We're looking at the book of Galatians. Do you know the book of Galatians? Read it over and listen at 3 o'clock this Wednesday, December 16, and see if you can answer the questions. It's all inside ABC, Alive Bible Challenge, and it's on the family station, Love 101. You, brother, brother, are really you really here to see You know, see? What are you excited about? Well, every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m., I have to listen to the program. 
Which program that? Campus Connection on Love 101 with Pastor Stevenson Samuels and Floyd Wilson, where they speak about school, education, student loan, and so much more. And I get to call as well. So I depart there the program and weep on because we have some burning issues. <laughs> well, we have got to tune in to this Tuesday then at 5.30 p.m. On Love 101. Healthcare workers are working very hard to ensure lives are saved and people recover quickly from COVID-19. But their work is becoming harder because you're not wearing your mask, washing your hands with soap and water, or using hand sanitizer, and you are not maintaining physical distance. Let's limit the need for hospital beds and ventilators. Do the right thing. Cover your nose and mouth with a mask. Practice good hand hygiene and maintain a physical distance of six feet between you and others. COVID-19 is not over. Protect yourself while protecting others. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. And a reminder that The Rock is brought to you by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Healthy people, healthy environments. You need to know your rights and how the laws of Jamaica can help you defend those rights. That's why Under the Law is still serving you in its 48th year. The program comes to you on Love 101 FM on Tuesdays and Thursdays through the kind sponsorship of the Bank of Jamaica, building an inclusive economy. Under the law, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6.20 a.m., 2.55, 6.45 at 9.10 p.m. on Love 101 FM. Listeners to Love 101 FM are advised that the views and opinions expressed in this program are not necessarily those of Love 101 FM. All right. That's it. Yep. Hiya. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is The Rock. I am Pastor Steve Blair. And my, you know, I left all the introduction earlier of my guest because I just wanted to get into the stuff. But let me just tease you a little bit. This is The Rock with me is Reverend Dr. Carla Dunbar. And uh, she is something else. Let me tell you who she is. She's the senior pastor for the Cavaliers Church of God of Prophecy and nationally as the family life director of the of the church group. Now, that's just one part of her, and we call her pastor, but let's get the real part of Carla Dunbar. Uh, she holds a BA in theology, an MA in counseling psychology, a PhD in marriage and family therapy. She's a licensed sex therapist. She's also a certified professional life coach and media consultant. Um, of course, she has her ministry, the Carla Dunbar Ministries in Kingston, Mandeville, Montego Bay. She's been conferred an honorary doctorate um, of philosophy in the Humane Letters and Award Fellow of the Most Excellent Order of International Expert in the Field of Marriage and Family Counseling. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I feel like going back to my sports voice for when I was on TV abroad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls, let's get ready. No, we're not going to rumble. Carla, <laughs> people people are looking to be able to rumble in their marriage life, uh, to go ahead. And uh, we've always had this um, fairy tale philosophy and thought of marriage. Many can't find it. And a big part of it is this topic that we have today on being unequally yoked. Want to remind people, as you listen to the program, you can send in your messages to 9973125. If you give a voice note, keep it between um, 30 to 45 seconds, turn the radio down and give your voice note. You can type and send your messages in. And at the right time, you can call 968-8327, 968-8328. Well, we were talking while the show was offline. Um, and people start writing questions. So I'll, I'll get to some of them in a minute. But why is there such a struggle? Let's, let's look at it from this point of view, from marriages in Jamaica. Why is there such a struggle? Um, there's struggle for many, many different reasons. Um, God says through the prophet, as I people suffer because of lack of knowledge. I believe that we have not been taught marriage. You know, we have been taught many other things. You do spend four years to get a degree. To get a driver's license, you now you have to have a learner's at least two years. So you are taught to do these things. Marriage is not taught. You know, you're just old enough, you're 18, you can provide two birth certificates, voila, and you're married. And how is it that you are not supposed to be taught to do something that is supposed to be a lifelong thing? 
So it is no wonder that our degrees and our motor vehicles are lasting longer than our marriages because nobody teaches us. It is why I, I recently opened my online marriage academy called The Gym, the Grow Your Marriage Academy. And, you know, because I really believe that people must be taught because I am seeing too many broken marriages. I'm seeing too many problems. The divorce court is overloaded. Nobody's teaching. I've always wondered, you know, um, personally, I don't believe that love dies, but but people get to this point where they, they don't see hope and they don't see that they can work on um, the reissuing and the redevelopment of that love. But, it, but understand this, if you don't know what to do, how do you do it? If you don't understand your partner, if, you, if your partner doesn't understand you, you are going to have problems, you're going to have friction outside of that. But that even compounds it when two entities, two persons from different backgrounds, different walks of life with, with how many years of history behind them that is unknown to the other person. And you come to them and you expect it to live. You didn't get a baby. You get a full-grown adult who has come from some walk of life with baggages and challenges and different perspectives on life and all of that. And you're expected to just say, I do, and then cohabit with that person for the rest of your life when you don't even know the person. Yes. You don't understand you know, what about the person? You don't understand the intricacies. You don't understand the dynamics of different personalities. You don't, you don't understand all of these things. So how will you, you even the word in Deuteronomy 24, 5, Moses said to the men, and, and, and you know, that you, 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 you must take time. You must take time. Up. That's where we got the concept of the honeymoon from. Mm. But Moses' instruction was one year. We have water done honeymoon for two days, if we can afford two days. Right, and so there's no time spent together to know, even before, even after the courting period, is long supposed to be courting period. You get married, and you're, you're supposed to still be knowing, you know, because remember, it's not a become one, it's a becoming. Yes, you're constantly becoming. But if you don't know, if you have no understanding, what do you have to work with? What basis do you have to stand on? The foundation of any building is the most important. The foundation of a marriage is important, and a lot of marriages don't have no foundation. But that's why I, I love I love what you just said because I'm on a, I have a honeymoon every day of my life. We, we ought to be right. Yes. 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 We ought to be, but we don't, and so a lot of persons are challenged. We have challenges in our marriages because of this very say this very reason. There's a lack of knowledge of what marriage entails. What is God's idea of it? What is God's intention for it? We don't know. First of all, we're getting married and we don't even know ourselves. Yes. You understand? So we're taking on somebody else to get to know them. When we don't understand us, we can't even portray us to them. So that leads me to the, the, the real question because we started discussing earlier unequally yoked. And most people just look at the the unequally yoked issue and say, well, it's a safe, unsafe issue, but there, but there's so many. There's so, so many, much more. So yes. many, so much more to that because that's why when you started out the program and you said unsafe as opposed to unbeliever, I pointed that out because the truth is that a person can be with a person who is a believer, is as in you believe in the same God of the Christian, but you are not yet saved. You understand? So it's a matter of the person being unsaved and not unbelieving in the same God because persons naturally, if you marry to somebody who believes in another God, you're going to have more problems. Honestly, and you'll, you'll even have more problems than marrying somebody who believes in your God but is not yet saved. Yes. So we have we have all of these issues. Um, a Christian getting married to an Islamic person. Yes. Uh, a, right. a church a church of God of prophecy person getting married to a, um, a yeah, Adventist. That is interdenominational, right? Well, that well, is interdenominational well, well, and well, what, religious. Yeah, but what about the 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 prophecy person marrying an, an Adventist? Because well, I, I hear people talk about that kind of an issue. Yes. That, that certainly can be a challenge. I have seen it. I've seen it happen. But I know that they have challenges because, mm -hmm. yes, you want to be able to worship together as a family. Yes. You understand? And the differing beliefs, the different beliefs in the denominational differences there can create a problem. So what about two Christians now? Let's say one educated, one not educated. What about some of these <laughs> other issues? No, so, there's no, so there's no intellectual or mental intimacy yes. here. 
uh, that's a totally different thing. You understand? There is no mental intimacy, so you cannot have a meaningful conversation. And well, you are not having. I, I won't say you cannot have because you can have meaningful conversation. It is how you understand the dynamics of your relationship. It's how you treat with your partner. Your partner does not have to have a formal PhD to be able to conversate with you who has a PhD, as in the case of myself and my husband, it doesn't have to happen. You understand? It, it, is, it is based upon your understanding of how you work with your partner in your marriage. You understand? So it doesn't have to be, not for the mental, intellectual intimacy i'm not of the opinion that you have to be 100 percent compatible to be married because okay. people are different and god intentionally made people different and if my husband and i were the same then one of us would be unnecessary in the marriage so so this whole marriage thing scares so many people because because yeah, i want to get married pastor but um I, I didn't have a father or or he she 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 never had a father and I'm a man and and all of these issues and when I talk it's like she don't she don't understand what it means to talk to a man and all of these things. Yeah, and that again that again boils down to proper premarital counseling. Premarital counseling is so important. I am urging, I am begging persons. I'm not saying that premarital counseling is going to alleviate all of your challenges. Paul makes marriage out to be a problematic. Plan B. Yeah, I can say marry if you must, but you see, as for me, I will yes. just stay single because look here, I can't even deal with myself and keep my focus on God much as to take on somebody else who's going to distract me. You understand? So, but I'm saying premarital counseling may not alleviate all the challenges that you will face, but it will certainly help to prepare you. And that's proper premarital counseling. I'm not talking about just your pastor who's your pastor. And because your pastor is your pastor, your pastor is giving you premarital counseling. That used to be, and I'm okay, and I'm not knocking pastors then, but I'm saying things are so much more complex right now. You understand? For instance, you know, we are out and we are working, we are earning, we are women who, we are out there, we are educated, we are earning. That certainly puts the man in a, in a, in a, in a spot. You of understand? Course. Because the man, he knows himself to be the provider, etc., etc., and then he comes now, and you really don't even need him for so many things because you can do it all by yourself. It creates a challenge in the marriage if you do not know how to balance well, you, the relationship. You're talking some things because I'm as you talk, everything is just licking me. The man, the woman who earns more than a man. All of those and, things. And the man yeah, comes home. And... Error, error. Remember say, you know, this thing, well, this thing last gone from Garden of Eden, but back in this back back in back in back in World War II, back in those times when when, when the men had to leave the factories and go out now to war. And the women, when they come back now, the women in the factory working, their women are now earning. They are now displaced. They are now no longer the breadwinner. It's the woman who is now the breadwinner. That totally displaced our men, you know. You yes. understand? And, and, and things have not gone back together since because women now understand that they can go out and earn. They can get higher education and, and so forth. But when you understand together as a couple, when you are taught, when in premarital counseling, when you you sign up for the academy, when you're coming to the gym academy, when you learn how it is that you speak to, because submission is a requirement. This is what Peter was talking about when he was talking to the women about submission to authority, irrespective of what you bring to the table. It is not about what you bring to the table. So the woman brings her salvation to the table is what she's saying here in First Peter 3. That's the context of First Peter 3, 1. You are saved, the man is not saved. Peter is saying the matter here is not about your saver, you're not being saved, it's a matter of submission to authority, irrespective of your salvation. Because if your devotion is to God and you understand submission to authority as in submitting to your husband, then who knows? Your submission, when he sees that, when he observes your chaste conduct coupled with respect of him, he may just say, you know, this salvation that my wife has is real and good and true, and then he comes over. That is what happened in my case. Wow. Now, I, easy. I really wanted to come back to your case because um, I'm told by so many men that the reason they don't come to church is because of how their Christian wife lacks submission, lacks respect. Um, and, and submits and, to her pastor. Only. And submits to her pastor. Who yeah. happens to be a male. Yes. <laughs> because, yes, because a lot of a lot of husbands, the unsafe husbands out there, are very antagonistic towards the husband, the pastor of their, their, their wife. Especially as a male pastor, because they see total submission, everything pastors say. 
and pastor says and pastor says and all we hear is pastor says but what do i say as a husband and how is it that what i say don't carry no weight you know and how is it that you have to get the opinion of your of your pastor when i say something to you first before you can submit it so we have that challenge but that again is us helping our christian wives to understand god's intent for marriage it's important to understand that right and that's because you are saved doesn't give you authority over and above your husband and just be happy because you have higher education and just because you're the higher income earner it doesn't make it so i am my husband's pastor in era i am my husband's pastor right so so when my husband comes to church my husband submits to my authority when my husband comes to church my husband submits to my authority because i am his pastor but when i come out of church i am mrs yes. dunbar i am not his pastor i am yes. mrs dunbar i am his wife i have to understand my rules i have to understand my function i have to understand that my submission to him so he is the priest in my home not because i'm the pastor i am not yes. the priest in my home my husband is the priest he is respected as the priest so we have to well, learn let's... that and we can only learn if so, we are taught so let's go back to where we left off earlier you get saved you become a pastor and here's this uh, man who's drinking, flirting, playing around, unsaved as your husband. What were your challenges? There were many and varied. <laughs> many and varied. I'm going to church. I'm in church teaching Bible study or preaching in down the road in the bar or in, at the round robin or whatever. And this is the same community. A stone show away. The church is a stone show from the bar. You understand? So well, um, I, 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 people would not outrightly say it to me, members of the church, people on the road, you know, but is, you know, you can't control your house. So all you want to come and control us, that kind of a thing. So the challenges were many and varied for me and them because he was unfaithful as well. And, and that was a common, that was common knowledge to them. It was common knowledge to all of us, right? So I had those challenges. I had, I faced those challenges. Did you cry? I, but I stopped. I cried. I bawled. I did many things. And one Wednesday night, when it was Bible study night, I asked one of my ministers to do the Bible study. And I went with my husband to wherever he was going. Yeah, he what? said, I don't go with him. So I went with him. And I'm telling you, I, I, and, and I went with him a second and a third time too. And it was going with him. One, I think that's that in itself, my submission to him, even though he knows I didn't necessarily want to go, but I went and I believe all of that. Well, I don't believe he told me my love, my focus, my submission, my, my, my faith in Christ. These were the things that drew him, not my preaching to him, because as I said earlier, one of the things that the Lord said to me is stop preaching to the man and live the life of virtuous wife, because a lot of us are Christian wives. But our attitude at home does not reflect Christ. So we are preaching Christ, but we are not reflecting Christ. So the men see us then as Christ. They don't see Christ in us, which is what ought to happen. And that's what the Lord corrected me about. Because I perhaps was not reflecting Christ in my every action and attitude and submission towards my husband. The Lord had to correct that in me. And it is when that was corrected that my husband came to Christ. You understand? Because he saw my respect for him, even though he was not a Christian. So you're saying you're saying something that a lot of people don't have hope about today. You're saying that there is indeed hope for people who are in a um, unequally yoked marriage, especially when you're the saved one and you see everything going the way you don't want it to go. I see so many women crying that their husband is drunk. And, you know, we have, a, we have a situation in Jamaica where a lot of men say they get saved because of the wife or yeah. they get saved to marry her. And then when they get married, they're out of the church. And, the church. And, and the woman is always so desperately lost as a result. But you're saying today that even in those situations, there's, there's hope. There is hope. Again, again, for the husband or the wife, it's your conduct. It's how you reflect Christ. You know, um, I was saying, you know, I even even in my church services, even ministering to my church, I have to help wives and husbands to understand. I give family time because sometimes, you know, your husband not saved and him said to your babes, can you stay home tonight? No, you're after church, you're leading worship and praise, you're, you're whatever, you're whatever. And 
these are the, these are not things that is going to draw you to him. And I'm not saying that you are to give up on church. And I'm not saying that you must be disobedient to pastor. I'm saying, I've said it in my church. If, if this is the case with any one of you here, please call me and tell me, Pastor, um, my husband asked me to stay home today. Or my wife asked me to stay home today. I will glad you give me my blessings to stay home. You understand? As long as you were not rusted on the program. And if you were rusted on the program and you called me and just give me enough time to make the switch, to make the change, I'll do it. Yes. Because if the family goes, the, the church goes, yes. the community goes, the society goes. Uh, because I, it, the society is built on families. So it is important that we understand that. 15 years ago, I, I, just, I made a decision to cut out Sunday night services at the church I passed it and came and I came on the heavy attack. But the reason why I did it, I asked the question. First question was, when do you make time to rest? And everybody said, Sunday after church. And I said, when do you spend time with family? And everybody said, Sunday after church. <laughs> so I said, okay. something, I said, something is wrong with this picture. And so I went back the next week and I said, I'm cutting out Sunday night services and people jump up, pastor is the evangelistic service, pastor this, pastor that. And I said, but you're not spending any time with your family. And as a pastor, you're seeing so many issues coming in from members and so many divorces and so many marriages falling apart. So I said, here's what I'm doing. Next Sunday, I'm carrying my family out for ice cream. And the following Sunday, of course, most people want to stop me. I say, I'm carrying my kids to, I'm carrying them to watch a movie. Um, I, 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 I worked in the media, so I covered sports on Saturdays. So I decided I'm taking my kids to the movies and my wife said she was coming. And um, it, it made such a big difference in my family at the time because everybody looked forward to this time. Now, when you and I were talking about it earlier, you mentioned that you could have send the night services also. Mm -hmm. I Why? did. I did because of a similar reason. Um, I am the national family. I serve as the national family life director for the Church of God of Prophecy. Um, but also in my own personal ministry, what I do is marriage and family. And when I do my needs assessment, when I go into a church and I do my needs assessment, I do my needs assessment of my members and what causes them to thrive, not just survive and you know how they go about their Christianity and how they go about their own social lives. And I look at all of those things. So where I am currently, we cut out Sunday morning, Sunday night services, actually, and only probably some ministry who wants to meet on that night, right? Because one, where my church is situated, where it was before, persons had to cross, go on some lonely roads to go home and cross river. And some of them are seniors. And, and I look at the time when I was Pentecostal, we get to over in the Sunday morning service and for them to do that trick and to come back. And if Sunday night is the time when you used to prepare for the rest of the week and to spend time with family, how do you get to do that? And I'm looking at if the family goes, then the, the church is going to go. I'm going to lose the church. And I have found that even when persons are, I have saved women in the church and their husbands are unsaved and I can adopt them. And when I adopt them and when I allow them to be home with their husband right now in my couples ministry at my church, the two husbands of the two wives, my two couples director, the husbands are unsaved. But I appointed both the husband and the wife to the couple's director. And do you, do you know that when we're having couples night, those husbands are very active. They're unsaved enough. They are very active serving refreshment, doing the stuff. And if we have a couple's group, and every now and again, you will see them, them standing and looking, shouting to the group, them unsaved enough. Uh -huh. But they're standing and shouting, but they are serving with their wives in the ministry. And this is how we sometimes, we often win person. I have seen it where, and persons have been won over because of these things. So whilst I'm not saying that Paul's admonition, you know, you know, to say that, you know, don't be unequal. You, whilst I'm not showing out the baby with the bathwater, mm -hmm. I am saying it is possible. There is hope. There is indeed hope. You know, um, I asked that question earlier regarding the Sunday night services because we were talking online during the last commercial break. So Richard Donegal said, what's wrong with Sunday night church? Richard, nothing's wrong, but the church has to make time for family. And when I was when I was a youth pastor, I remember counting every night of the week, something was taking place in the church. And women especially would leave their house every night and, and, and go to church. Um, looking at some of the messages on Facebook, and uh, just to go through these Facebook messages, and then we'll come back from the break. 
in just a minute and hear what Nadine has to say about the WhatsApp messages. Um, Opal says, I agree totally with you, Pastor, Pastor Dunbar. Marriage is not taught in churches. Marriage is not taught at all. They put it on the back burner as if they are afraid of this topic. Marriages are failing because people lack knowledge. Um, same thing about parenting, by the way. Marlene says, that was in the early years, Pastor Dunbar. The men and the women needed counselors like you, and they still do, yes. Um, um, she also points to the fact that when you went home, you are a wife who submits, and that's also very important. Elsie says, I love this. Richard says, the husband must submit to the wife. Mm. And Marlene says, it is so hard, Pastor, but you take the braveness and carry on the work of God. What a blessing. So many messages on Facebook. Um, normal which is a, a new person says you made god your priority and he changes the dynamics of your household what a mighty god we serve so 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 many messages when we come back from the break we'll hear some of what you're saying on whatsapp which is 9973125 and we'll take a, a few calls so you can speak to pastor dunbar before she departs we'll be right back after this break The Eroratri Evangelistic Association presents the Jamaica National Virtual Crusade. December 14 to 20, 6 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. daily under the theme Christ for the crisis. Come and hear powerful speakers experience your healing, your deliverance, and your... Dr. Dunbar, yeah. anything that you would like to hit on before we start taking calls up? Because I'm told you, you're leaving a bit early. Um. Three, not necessarily. Nine, you one. just ask me what they want to ask me. I have so much three, three, in my three, three, being, in my yes. head, that in marriage and family. You know, as like I told you, I just I, I just finished the first set of students in the gym. Um, I just taught a single school. I wasn't three, planning to teach eight, a marriage two. course first because I thought I needed to share It's not pre marriage course. It's a course called the MRI. It's a marriage readiness college. In association with the I Believe Initiative and Love 101, understand God didn't came for your single life. Understand that marriage is not a goal. Singleness is supposed to be pursued as opposed to marriage that cannot be. So the first set of students, the first six weeks course was just taught in the gym. And we're going to the second one. I want you to work on something something with me and I'll talk with you about it. Okay. I, I have a feeling to have a mass wedding ceremony for Jamaican spouses, common law people. I talk to a lot of them and it's always they don't have money or and I really want to do some things nationally in terms of talking to some of the men making decisions and just getting getting us into a position where we can get maybe a thousand couples. Yeah, man. Um, I have been doing what is called marriage evangelism, which is something yes. similar. So I have a space in Golden Spring, um, and the Lord bless me with a place and a And I just doing some marriage for first one second me that they don't marry. I want to I have the clothes. I work out everything. And the poor man, I have a, I work out something with a nurse and jewelry. I get the ring. And I do marriage evangelism. All right. Exactly where it's been in my mind for two years. Uh, um, so we'll talk about it because I really want to get um, a national program, get sponsors on board, um, talk about the history of the Jamaican man in slavery not being allowed to get married, uh, running around, and, and bring them to a place where they can make a decision. Right. And Jamaica together. still contains many features of the plantation society. Yes, right. So that's women are breeders and that's... Yeah. I will talk. Mm -hmm. we'll Stand by. You entrepreneur? Nah. How about being a student and a governmental leader at the same time? Sounds a lot, right? Well, scholars, this Tuesday inside Campus Connection, we are connecting with not one, but two governmental leaders. We will have a chit chat at 2019 to 20. I want to go back to something that we started with. Yeah. Um, the women in the church who are waiting um, on finding a husband. Um, I want to I want to hit back on that because there's so many, and we want to encourage them. Uh, I'm going to ask you what can they do and. Um, so many keep waiting. 
Tuesday, huh? Right. Yes, 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 yes. Sure. Sure. To help them because we have, we have socialized them to not look outside, but then we're not bringing any money inside for them to look at. All right, all right. work every day in the here Pastor Dunbar talking my life. I just found out in October of this year my husband was cheating four years of our marriage and it was right after a fast and ah, I just want to see him hurt and I, I don't know but what Pastor Dunbar I thank you. I thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Good morning Pastor Blair and to your guests. Dunbar. Well, my little view on this unequally yoked situation is that I believe once you are a Christian and you are married, if your other partner is not a Christian, once you are married, I don't think that's an unequally yoked situ- union. You know, but in the case you now that you are a Christian and mm-hmm. not married, and along with the partner that is unsafe, that's what the unequally yoked union is coming. That's what I believe. As this as Carla Dunbar was saying, you know, she was along with her partner. I mean, she was a pastor, but you wasn't saying, but they were married. So that's how I look on it. Yeah, I'm not going to really stay along. So that's my little view. I, I want to come to you before Nadine plays anymore. Because... I want to go, B. I'm just okay. calling again to say that um, I left a message the other day about the station. Is yes, the yes. Phone? So, so Pastor Dunbar, the... Yeah. Another station shipping in. Can I hear anything down there? Yes. So, Pastor Lombard, two two very good points. One where um, your your life story is touching others. Amen. 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 God be the glory. Yes, and that's what it's all about. Right. That was that was my my sermon on, on Bishop David's TV program a couple of days ago. Um, Let us come past me is what a lot of people ask of God. But if God allowed Jesus to miss the cross, we, God would not have the glory. So exactly. our suffering sometimes, we, we, we've, we've got to stop introspecting and saying, what about me and, and everything, and start saying, Lord, this is about you, this is not about me. But secondly, the gentleman calls and says, this is not unequally yoke. You know, I really wanted to talk about what a yoke is. <laughs> 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 Shall I transfer that to you? Because... Because if you're in a marriage and there's a yoke, which is basically what's taking place, you know, um, and one person's different, even though even though we've been talking about the biblical um, view with Paul and the unbeliever and the believer, but the, the real thing is about life. And there's so many une- unequality in relationships. And that's why we need people like Dr. the Honorable Carla Dunbar, because... Um, Especially in the premarital area, yeah. um, and also in the in the marital area, uh, have you ever had someone choose not to get married after speaking with you in the premarital area? Um, yes, and I've also turned persons away. In as in, I wow. have told them that if they do not, if they are not um, believing what I am teaching, then they are free to find another marriage officer. And yes. I've also persons come to me to help me to help them to assess whether or not this is the right person for them. You know, so I've done consultation in that area. And um, I have sat with persons and when, when I have first, my first session with them is like an interview. And when I've done that interview, I will say to them, I don't think you are yet ready. I think you need a little bit more time. So if you're, so I just, I prefer for persons sometimes, especially in the church, don't set dates and then you come. And I must work with your date, right? Because in my heart, I am representing God. And if I'm representing God, so I don't do business. I don't perform business marriages, right? Mm. I don't. That's my standard. I don't perform. Yes. I need to know that your marriage is a marriage is one that you intend for life. You understand? Because you, you go in, this is your intention. I don't say things don't happen down the line, but this must be your intention going in. I am getting married to this person for life. Because that's a vote that you're going to be taking. And I, and I believe in it, you know? So yes, persons have come. I have told them they are not ready. Persons have come one at a time. I reach forgiveness in my premarital counseling, and one man said he's not into that because he thinks I am perpetuating um, unfaithfulness in his marriage. I was teaching him on forgiveness, and um, so he said that he doesn't want to do that. 
And so he left and they went somewhere else. They got married. So a year later, they were, they were getting a divorce anyway. And that's, which is not good. But I'm just saying, you have to look at all the nuances. Yes. You, know, you have to look at all of these things. You have to prepare them because some things are in, in, inevitable. It's going to happen. And, 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 you know, some things are going to happen if you, if, and, and if you don't understand each other, it's going to happen. So yeah, persons have gone, persons have left, persons have been turned away. But I can say the testimonies of so many more persons exactly. that their marriage is actually lasting, yes. is that their marriages after coming through my ministry have been solidified. You know, they are better for having come. So the teaching must be good. It's not me. It's what God is doing through me. Boy, um, there's so many messages on, on Facebook and I'm sure on WhatsApp. Um, I'm going to take but, a but few... But Ira, you said something about the yoke. And yes, yes, yes. go for it, go for it. Is, right? Yes, uh -huh. the, the yoke, all right, back in the day when they were talking about them, the concept is in Deuteronomy, where the two, the two animals were put in this triangular shape thing to, to keep them together, right? So a yoke is something that, that, that holds you together, right? Yes. And there's so much inequality. There are so much things that, that causes you not to be. Take for instance, let me just pick on financial in on finances in a mind. Uh -huh. So many spouses cannot agree financially. They do not have financial intimacy in their marriage. They are intimate, they are in the bedroom. I don't even know if they are intimate, they're having sex, right? But they're not intimate. That is another thing because right. if they're not intimate on all the other levels. How is it that you become intimate sexually? Because all of the other forms of intimacy is important for you to get to that aspect of intimacy. So you're not, you don't have mental intellectual intimacy. You don't have a recreational intimacy. You don't have financial intimacy. You don't have emotional intimacy. So how you reach sexual intimacy? Yes. So a lot of persons are having sexual intercourse without intimacy. You understand? So there's a lot of inequality on different levels. People you know, are not telling us for so much I earn, they don't know what I earn, they have never seen a bank account, da 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 da. We have separate account, our assets are different. They're signing prenups. I perform, I don't perform marriages where you're signing prenups. That's another no. thing. Right? So these are my personal standards. But I, I, I find I find that we don't understand each other. You know, the book that we would have read many years ago, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Uh -huh. uh, I'm talking about women that don't, from a man's perspective, don't understand a man's drive to be a provider. Um, spending money to him is a big deal. And he sees a lot of things as unnecessary. And the woman is saying, understand. I have this under control. Yeah. And the man is they saying, don't but you don't understand that. This not, it's not because they see a few men who are mm -hmm. not responsible. They use that because I don't think that men are intrinsically bad. One of the courses I'm going to be teaching in the gym is how to speak to your husband or listen. So wives understand the influence that they can have on your husband for good if they know how to speak to them, how to use their influence in a positive way. Because yes, we do have influence. God has gifted us in areas. We have fine intuitiveness. We have a, the finer instinct of a female intuition. And that is for the benefit of serving God. If we know how to do it, then we can do what we do. And so we have the ability to influence our men for the better if we know how to speak to them, how to respect their authority. So I'm going to be teaching that course, how to, you know, and teaching the men how to love your wife in a Christ-centered way. Because there, that is, there's so much inequality that the yoke, seeing that is around our neck, even when we're Christians, there's so many Christians going to church. The first person said it, yeah. There are yes. so many Christians going to church together. They are professing Christians, but they are unequally yoked because they are only to, when they come to church, you see one sit over there, so the other one sit over there. So there's no coming together. So if there's no coming together, there, there's no coming together at all. Everybody talks about the unequal yoke in the church. Everybody knows the phrase, yes. but that but but very few people understand the concept the of concept. yoke. Yes. Because when 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 you mentioned it after when you brought it back up, I'm seeing the two oxen. And I can't see one going forward and one going backward. No. I can't see one going left and one going right. Exactly. So, so we're going together. Yes. Together. And, and they because understand the importance. It's like a, it's a couple that is chiseling out a common purpose. They are going towards a, 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 a goal together. It's not like yes. the two horses who are going towards the A in two different directions. But we don't. We don't understand that because nobody teaches that either, um, Harold. Let's see if Nadine has any messages or phone calls. Ladies and gentlemen, 
um, the the pro I, I I am I am giving her a promotion today. I know we have Professor Andrew Scott and his wife, but I'm increasing her her um, position today to professor. Um, I, they call her the sex doctor. I'm calling her the professor, yeah, marriage and life. Right. <laughs> Nadine, talk to yes. us. Okay, so we have Marlene. Let's hear what Marlene has to say. Hello, President. Good morning. This is my perspective on marriage. All right. Being a child of God and your friend, somebody, first thing your pastor is saying to you that um, you need to marry them. Even though you find the person, sometimes you're, gr you're growing to love the person. Sometimes by the time it's, and by the time it's a, a church by a church is a see you are talking to the person. Then they say, go well, and never get married. And you didn't tell tell the, the pastor and I church by now, so say you want to get married to the person. And you then you become so pressure. You're under pressure for all of this. Cause I know it. Because this is my second marriage, right? Got married when I was 20. Took up for 10 years. And I had to break it. Because it was just not going nowhere. I want to have a marriage like, was that my father and my mother? This is my third kid, it was father two years of wedding anniversary. Even though my father gave my mother trouble because he smoked and he drank. But yet, I didn't want a long lasting relationship. I never see myself married again. But guess what happened? It wasn't working. Going to counseling and after counseling, by the time the counseling finished, you're in the next war. Wow. And so sometimes, if sometimes some people just keep their mouth and let you go through the process of our own life, then we're better for us. The bad time we get, if we, if we do set, decide to get married to the person, then it won't. All right, uh, all right, that's mm -hmm. painful. Uh, there's so many coming in, so I'm just going to jump to another one. Yes. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, good morning. I'm listening to the program. It is very interesting. Yes, I love it because I'm looking forward to get married next year. I, um, I, was, I, I am still working at a particular school and um, dear my husband-to-be working there. We went to church together. Over 20 years, we're moving up and down together. And I did not know that man was my hus husband to be until the 24th of October, which is my birthday. God revealed it. I always say to God, God, loneliness won't leave me alone. Mighty God, God send me a husband. Send me a man to be my husband. A man that love you and love me after and love himself. You understand? And God, work, God, still work miracles. All right. God. Awesome. All right. Let's, um, boy, I tell you the story's coming in. More, here's another one. A very pleasant morning to my love. 101 family, Pastor Blair. Good morning to you. This subject with the topic of an equal yoke. It's a broad, wide topic. We have got to have time for our explanation. But one thing I would want to say right now, if I have my partner anywhere I am, I would want my partner to be there. I, want, I don't want to be on the west and he is on the south. So it's a coming together with proper understanding of what this really means can we get back the landline please so we are able to talk all right all right then this... the landline don't move <laughs> it's still working isn't it nine six eight eight three two seven yes and nine six eight eight three two so eight. good morning all right let's hear another you. one i'm at home today and i'm really enjoying the program with pastor dunbar through the today I really learned a lot. I've been married for 29 years. And, um, you know, there are times when we have our ups and our downs. But uh, I'm a Christian. He got saved um, shortly after me. And um, still there's not perfectness 100% on his side. Because, you know, um, um, 
as a man, sometimes um, he doesn't have the strength um, that um, I believe he should have. But um, we are getting there and we are going on. God bless you. Yes, good morning, good morning, Sister, uh, Sister Carla Downboy. I want to be a sexologist just like you. Yes, good morning, Pastor Blair and Auntie Nadine. Ah, uh, I tell you, I wanted to call in because I have holy pussy. But it's time will not give him, I won't have the time to do it. But I just want to say, I remember when I got saved and my husband wasn't saved, we were still got dance all together. And I remember once we went to a dinner and a function was down the road. And I went, I said to him, I will walk with you because I realized I miss my bad out of the dance. Hall. And that was a stepping stone when I went, you like, you would come, you could come. And I say, yes, I'm going to do this. And I tell you, it changed our life completely. So yeah, they are equally yoke. Me can't even touch that right now. But let me tell you, we'll finish sheep clothing in that church. So we have to still careful who we claim. So enough of the man they want to drink the milk. And when they get the milk, they don't want the cows. Okay, ladies, be careful. Okay. All right. So we have some written messages. I don't know what you want me to do. And I think Take about three, and I'm going to read about three All from right. Facebook and go back to Mrs. Carla before she disappears. Yes. Um, this person says, I'm a Christian raised in church all my life. Nothing but church. Never been to a club. I would hear, don't be unequally. But if there is no one in the church interest, <laughs> what should a single Christian do? Uh, Cherry says, True words, Pastor Dunbar. These words need to be taught in many Christian marriages. Um, um, hearing Pastor Dunbar really talking real talk about church folks, how we relate to our spouses, we have it all mixed up. It should be God first, family second, church, then church. But we turn the things upside down, and that's why we all having these challenges. I'm guilty too, but learning. You know, I heard Pastor T.D. Jake talk, and he actually said family first. That's interesting. All right, over to you. <laughs> yes, uh, Marion says, I long to hear this type of teaching in our society. It is missing in our, most of our churches. Bless you, Pastor Dunbar. Here is Ioni. Uh, please, good morning, Nadine. Good morning, Pastor Blair Dunbar. I'm listening with tears in my eyes. Solid words. We need more of this in our churches. Thank you and blessings. Um, a lot of hand claps here. What a wonderful teaching. And then Sims Scarlett says, good morning. This is a message for me. I spoke to God about, and he sent me the answer. Thank you, Rev. Thank you, God. Then she says, how can I get connected to your gym? And she writes GYM. I don't know if that's what you call it, Kathy. It it's GYM for the gym uh -huh. academy and GYMM for the gym ministry. Wow. And we have listeners from all over the world. Um, and the last one says premarital counseling is highly necessary. Uh, so something, um, uh, you know something, Errol? People, I heard one of the ladies, I was listening to her, and she was talking about the pressure from church when two persons started talking. I had a young man a few weeks ago who, out of church pressure, got married and almost went mentally ill just because mm -hmm. he saw the young lady yesterday, saw that they liked, they, they liked each other about they didn't know how far it was going to go and they forced him to marry. He almost was mentally ill. You know, yes. so church pressure, society pressure, family pressure. God is not looking for that. That's not what it ought to be. And if we are saying that, and, I'm, and I remember, so we're not showing up the baby with the bathwater, but what are we doing so that the women, because a, a lot of our churches are female dominated, right? And most of the time because our gospel is so effeminate. What are we doing to win the men in the church so that the women... Every year I do something called man hunts, right? Mm -hmm. I believe I'm teaching the church to look man, right? Because if we male the fishing, somebody needs to go fishing and find men. So every year, one month, I, I, I one full month is called man hunt month. And that's November every year. And I go all out to find men, to bring them into the kingdom. Yes, because I want them saved, but women in the church, look who we are telling not to go out there. So what do you do? What are we doing when we are saying that? So we need to, not it's prayer and potato. We need to not only preach it, but we need to teach it and then we need to do it. I have a man on Facebook saying 
Um, he's in New York. He says, but pastor, I'm a man and I'm looking for a wife. <laughs> 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 so it's not, it's not just the women can't find, you know. Um, and so, so we still have a responsibility to, to prepare the ladies in the church for um for their husbands we should do that um, in the process we even like yes. the process if we see two persons who like each other we need to be chaperones chaperones see like it show out the window we need to guide the process not the force is... them but guide the process we have we have sean williams online with us also today um and i don't know if i can get you, and leave about you, you, know. you, you <laughs> well um well but, i have clients but right, right. Before the seven o'clock this evening, so, so give me I give you a minute to throw out something to everybody out there. We're going to invite you back because everybody is writing me and saying, Pastor Blair, part two is a demand and a command. So you and my producer, Kathy Gay, are going to have to work that out. Maybe in the new year, and we decide, you know, for me in my church, I told my church last week, I'm dedicating 2021 to the family. Right. And so, so maybe we can do a little family thing every month or two months, um, as long as love approves it. Because I know they have their their marriage show. But give give us talk to your audience. Um, I see Sean is there. Sean, how are you? Doing good. Yes. Awesome. I, awesome time. I, yeah, man. I passed the Sean. Ah, <laughs> uh, you are. Hey, you are amazing. Let's say, you're good. <laughs> You're good, man. You're good till it bad. You're bad, good. <laughs> yeah, man. Awesome. I don't know why I'm on this program. I feel like I'm coming after a star. I tell you, I mean, great oh, job, man. We are Absolutely all stars amazing. in the sky. We just serve different purpose. Amen. <laughs> We're all stars, yeah? right? Right. We serve different purpose. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to Sean in a few minutes, mm. um, and I think Sean can give us maybe a male perspective to some of this too. Um, but Sean, do you have any questions you want to throw at Dr. Carla before she disappears? Well, um, how do we help church leaders to know what you know and employ it where we don't have the flock having to go through unnecessary pain? I Okay, I, I would love to help church leaders. And, and one of the things I said when I was launching the gym, that was a live launch, was that the courses can be taken. As a matter of fact, the first course that was just taught was the MRI. And it was a marriage readiness intelligence. And it was taught to single persons, but I had a pastor and his wife on. Um, oh. And another couple, they said that they are couples director. And so they came on to gain the knowledge so that they could now help single persons in their churches. You know, to 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 how to 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 how to, how to, to, to cross over, how to embrace mm. themselves, and then if it is that they want to, how they can do that in a wholesome way that is reflecting Christ and Christ centeredness. So the gym is a is a, I, I, it's an academy for learning about marriage, for enhancing your marriage, for embracing your singleness, for learning what to do prior to marriage, and to learn how to sustain your marriage. So that, that's one way I can say. And knowledge, again, Proverb, Solomon in Proverbs 3, 4, and 5, he says, Proverbs 24, sorry. Um, he says, by wisdom a house is built, by Ooh. understanding is established, and by knowledge the rooms are filled with precious and pleasant riches. No, the first thing we need to get is the knowledge. But a lot of people have knowledge and don't understand it. If you get Ooh. knowledge of your spouse, and you get knowledge of what is supposed to happen within the context of marriage. And then you get the understanding, the comprehension of that knowledge, right? Then you are able to make the necessary application, which is the wisdom. So Solomon was spot on there, and God has said it a lot of times. We need knowledge, we need understanding of the knowledge, and then we need to be able wisdom. to make it applicable. That is what is missing. A lot of us don't have the prerequisite knowledge because we have not been taught. Some things they just expect us to catch. You know, uh, you catch marriage. How you catch <laughs> how you have full, nice, wonderful, you know, sexual experience. How do you catch that? These are not things that are caught. These are mm. things that are supposed to be taught. Taught. Yes. Well, Agreed. folks, we got to wrap this segment. Um, Dr. Carla Dunbar. Um, I won't I won't say anything more other than that the people that have me under some pressure. You, you can find me on Facebook too. That's Carla Dunbar Ministries on Facebook, Carla Dunbar Ministries on Instagram. 
Carla Dunbar Ministries. Any phone numbers? Any phone numbers? Yes, 782, that's 876 876 782 7646. That's 876 782 7646. That's the numbers to my office. And you can find me on Facebook and Instagram, Carla Dunbar Ministries. And you can write to me at Carla Dunbar Ministries at gmail.com. I'm going to have uh, Kathy and Nadine and myself, we're going to sit down and we're going to bring you in for just a phone call show. Okay. We won't even talk. We won't even say anything. People just okay. call. They call and cry. They call and ball. And okay. then we're just going to give them some deliverance. Okay. Um, thank you for joining us. We'll be right back here after this break. We've got with us Sean Williams. He's going to continue the chat. And we're just going to mash up some darkness. Coming right back here on The Rock. I'm Pastor Steve Blair. I'll give you a call. Right. I know, I know. I saw the message. Yes. Hey, Sir Sean. Yeah, man. All right, so you're you're coming in after the the great Carla Dunbar. People are killing yes. you over here. So, no pressure. So we have to stay strong. All right. Yeah, man. Always. What you what you what you? I don't know if you've heard the rest of the program. Where do you want to come in? What do you want to talk about? Do you have anything special that you want to hit on that we can build? We are live on Facebook. We're live on Facebook, yes. This one, no one I know, that's, that's fine. Everybody. That's fine. Just we say hi to them. They know that I always talk during this session, during okay. the commercial break. You're tuned to Love 101. We have been asked to announce the... I never wrote down her number because people are asking for Georgia's it on Facebook. But... Sims and Bentley Mahoney. Just want to reason as man. From a Georgia man perspective. Smith which is always so important. Kogio How Road, men you are to know and Catherine understand relationships. Died November okay. 25. And how we can help men husband, to have um, daughter, healthier Shaila, ways of functioning. Two brothers... Yeah. Two sisters, a big part of that sisters, tool that I find brothers, is, is often sisters, when I sit and talk to women, they don't know our perspective. Body of Georgius Smith so, Sims so they, they just feel that funeral home he's wrong. And I'm Saturday, saying, well, December 19th, he's at work because so he, he wants to make Memorial sure you can go and get the things you want. Funeral service and interment you know? at 1 p.m. Mm. Bentley Mahoney, yeah. Winston. Wallaby right. of Lord's Vale, so, I'm going to introduce you and died November 5, leaving mother Zatilda, just flow. daughters and, Petrina just flow. and Keisha, three grandchildren, great grandchild, eight brothers, five sisters, nieces, nephews, other relatives, and friends. Body of <laughs> Bentley Mahoney, right, Winston, that's what you think. Wallaby. Women don't just accept a man's perspective. Home, they... You were done Saturday, December 19th. No, to the Lord Carla made a point teacher, about the women who are in church all the time and the unsafe husband. At 1 PM. And, and, you know, their family the man wants a wife home sometimes. If he doesn't go have a wife, he can find company. You're tuned to Whoa. the show. Whoa. Yeah. I hope you're brave enough, sir. I am very, I'm very brave, man. I'm very Let's brave. Get real, man. Let's but get real. it's not for me to talk. I'm the host. <laughs> so in other words, you want me to put my neck out there on the block? Right. It's right. I have a big one. We're coming back. Show that man, broad, back broad. And number for Dr. Dunbar. <laughs> I um, think you're going to get a lot of that now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <Because you're> gonna... <laughs> I'm going to go through the process wow. of a divorce. Wow. 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 Okay. So uh, I need to mark that one. Nadine, good morning. Yes. Could you send me our number, please? I didn't oh, get all of it. See, I repeat it go. for me. My daughter is about to get married and she's young, all 20 right. at year old. The need is and there. I would love that. Um, this person says, Rev, I need you in my church. Um, mm -hmm. I tell everybody all day, um, these topics are great topics. Up, up. That sounds like somebody there. Debbie from New York says, mm -hmm. Pastor Dunbar, you've been ministering to me for years through your husband. I must tell you, every time I hear you, 
I just love the truth of your ministry. And other persons are um, sending in somebody asking for part two. They are so there's so much more unequally yoked than marriage at large. Wow. Yeah, mm. this needs a part two. Yolanda, what are you saying? Greetings, Reverend Dunbar and Pastor Blair. I just want to ask this question. Is this an equally yoke as well? Are you considered an equally yoke? Um, two persons get married and one decides to go abroad to make life. And for years, that person is away. For years, and the next person, the other half is somewhere else in another country. And the other half is working in another country. Um, I don't think that is healthy for the relationship. Can you expand more on it for me, please? All right. So over to you, Pastor Steve. Yeah, so we come back with a, with a, a big question. Can mm. we handle space? Can we handle time apart? Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Rock, and we've heard your comments. Um, we do uh, say that the Honorable Doctor, um, marriage counselor, um, mm. is no longer with us today. She has departed. That is Pastor Dunbar. But joining us now, my second specially invited guest is Pastor Sean Williams, works as a pastor at his home church, Fell Tab, as Fellowship Tabernacle and uh, serving senior pastor and helping to equip the saints for ministry. Pastor Sean is passionate about the transformation of people and the nation, and he believes that the people of God have a responsibility to make a difference wherever they are planted. He's married to Alicia Williams, and together they have two beautiful children, Peyton and Lauren. I, yeah. don't, know that, I don't know if that name Peyton comes because you love NFL football like me, but well, well you're, you're so right. After Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, man. Yeah, Welcome. Man. <laughs> Pastor Sean, I can tell you this. Yeah. You, have a, you have a pastor at your church. <laughs> what, what, I think his name something like Al Miller. Yeah, see, so see you, him here, so. So if you are as crazy as my good friend is, we're, we're in for some trouble over the next 20 minutes. Listen, the lady, yeah. the lady said that... One one spouse gone abroad and the other one is left and they're apart for years. Is this unequally yoked? Um, let's talk about this because it's the Jamaican issue. Yeah. Uh, up to last week, a lady called me and said the man abroad and, and been over there 10 years. And when she called him, is another woman answering the phone. Talk to me, Sean. Yeah. The realities of Jamaica. You see, one of my concerns is, is that, um, by the way, Professor Dunbar was amazing. I, I, I listened and I was entertained, but also informed. And yes. so hats off to her. One of the key things about relationships, you know, the Bible says two cannot walk together unless they agree. Paul, oh, Paul, yes, yes, yes. The agreement is critical. So if a couple, and we know life hard, let's say for a season, someone wants to go overseas to make life better for the family. There has to be an agreement. Agreement, the nature of the job, where you'll be going. And how many also, times are you going to come home for the year? <laughs> how long? How long? Because let me tell you, man, you see distance, seawater, you know, rust things. I'm telling you, no, make nobody fool you. If you have a considerable distance and length of time, it is going to put a, a tremendous pressure on the relationship. And very often, the, the impact is negative and it won't last. It won't last. So I would not, um, I would advise it if both are in agreement for a season and there has to be plans to see them and have interaction, touch. Go look, oh. look for y'all, go check her. What's up, a video call now that can't work. Wow, video call can work sometime, but you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. But I, I get to see her pretty face and her smile and. You know, I'm something, man. You see, as a, as a man, let's keep it real, as yes. a man. And I'm trying to be nice here. No man, me be real, know, yes. We don't know no man. Who can tell me that for a year or two years they can do without their wife and no, something I, else is not going? I need mine every day. You, 
you can't tell me, say, you there fine for two years. Yes. And no, no, go on. No, 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 no. Not possible, sir. Not possible. Highly unlikely. So you have to take, and you have to know who you are. Like, like me, if me go fine faster, at two weeks, me I stay. Two Oof. weeks is my maximum. Yes. Two weeks, me I come here. Because I know me. Yes. I know it's difficult, but but you're you're leading me to a question that kind of popped up earlier, mm. and and I know this is a big issue, especially for the Jamaican setting. And I'm I'm gonna come back to you about you the unequal yoke in a in a minute. But yeah. can there be hope in our relationships when there is hurt and pain? Because uh, the man's gone abroad, the man is there, yeah. or or the woman's gone abroad, and you find out that there has been um, a relationship, yeah, a cheating situation. Mm -hmm. um, but the man decries and says, "Honey, I love you," but mm -hmm. um, I've heard some of that today: some pain, some mm -hmm. tears, some crying. Um, yeah. And some people say they could never forgive, especially in the setting of a marriage. Uh, a man yeah. said earlier, according to Professor Dunbar, that. If there's any talk of a marriage in premarital or or anything, it means that we're setting up the possibility of failure. But he doesn't want any failure in his marriage. Mm. Can there be hope uh, when situations arise? Several things we must understand that when we enter a relationship, we are entering it with someone who is not perfect, and the person who is in the mirror is not perfect either. So sometime in the relationship, there's going to be need for forgiveness. In fact, any human interaction relationship requires forgiveness just for its maintenance. And if we ourselves, we who walk with God, it is forgiveness that ushered in our relationship and forgiveness that maintains it. That's the truth. So one, we have to understand we need to practice forgiveness. Of course, certain wounds and certain pain hurt more than others. And part of the healing process is the letting go. You see, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Mm. Unforgiveness, it, 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 it causes oh. your, your past. Oh. It causes your past to invade your present and sabotage your future. And so yes. forgiving is in your best interest emotionally, physically, spiritually. And that, however, does not mean you have to stay in that relationship or continue because it takes two to tango, one and can clap. So obviously, if someone falls short, how he or she responds to their falling short are they contrite? Are they sorry? Are they prepared to take steps to ensure it doesn't happen again? So that is also a key to be involved in but, the But the, per the person saying, I don't care about how contrite he is. He hurt me. I have my pain. He mm -hmm. shouldn't have done that. Or she shouldn't have done that. I, I, let me tell you something, man. I, um, I can understand it, you know. I can understand it. But when God causes cause us to for, forgive we have to ask why because it's even though it happens to us we have a choice in how it works in us we have a responsibility to honor god's word and also preserve us and to preserve our walk with him let me tell you something it's a bitterness is contagious we take so much hurt and pain into other relationships which don't even have anything to do with one that, that causes us pain. And so our children will suffer. Our neighbor, I mean, because just boils over. So my thing is, for our own emotional health and well-being, I tell you, forgive, let go. But I'm saying it does not necessarily mean you have to maintain the relationship. So you're going to a deep place now, brethren. Yeah. You go to a place where you're talking about unequally yoked emotionally. Emotionally. Because some people are bringing baggage. Some people are bringing things into this relationship Pastor, and this marriage. And me, if I tell you. Tell me about it, man. Say something. We do not know 
how to process pain or hurt. One of the scariest things for me is when I see somebody and they look so normal, like normal, mm. happy, always smiling. If you check them Instagram page, selfie, whatever. But when the masks come off, you're like, how? How can you be walking around carrying so much but wearing a mask? It is so ironic that in this season, we are told to wear masks. But we are wearing masks a long time. A long time we are, we are wearing masks, you know? Yes. And we, this is why when you meet somebody for the first time, you aren't really meeting them. You are meeting their best legal representative. What they are giving like? you the person that they want you to like. Mm -hmm. So you, you like somebody who does not exist. But as you get involved with them, them can't act forever. Hold, so on, the hold, mask... on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let me just advertise, ladies and gentlemen, this is yeah. Sean Williams from Fellowship Tabernacle. <laughs> Deep words, brethren. Deep words. Yeah, man. So you get involved with somebody who you think you know, but you don't know. And then when the real person start come out, you're like, me can't believe, say, I saw your steer. I saw your tan bad. Because you were, you were deceived by your image. Mm -hmm. And that image is projected because too many people are so afraid of being themselves out of fear of being rejected. Wow. And so we project something out of insecurity that is not true, that we cannot maintain. And this is why we say in Jamaica, see me and live with me. <laughs> Come on, a two different thing. You, you, you're taking me to a place now that I can get myself in trouble. Because let's, let's, have some, let's have some trouble, man. No, have no, no. Trouble. Because, because I have some questions I want to ask you, and I have, to, I have some messages on the screen. Um, and I hear you talking like this, so I'm going to throw the first question. I'm going to go to the real question. Yeah. When you said to me, Simeon, come and live with me, mm. is, is two different things. Yeah. Um, it, it then, it, then I feel like the cinema, and I said, Pastor, you want me to marry? You want me to marry? And you know, you're trying to counsel me and tell me that. I shouldn't be living with her before I get married. But I, oh. I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I can get married to somebody I don't know. And, 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 and the problem that we're seeing is, mm. the, the, the first question was, are you saying to me from what you're saying, Master Sean, yes. the mm. father of Sir Peyton, that um, <laughs> yeah. people get married to people and don't know them? Mm. <laughs> people Otherwise, get married to people and don't really know no, them? And by, and by the way, by the way, knowing the person is critical. And that's why there is a season of getting to know. Mm -hmm. But getting to know somebody, you can only know somebody if they project truth. So if there is no truth, what you have is knowledge that is not based on truth. And mm -hmm. the process of getting truth is openness. It is engaging it is understanding also knowing you because we sometimes don't know we either because we ourselves put on our mask as well. So as I'm speaking, don't think about the other person. Think about me. Am I wearing a mask? Am I my authentic self? Am I willing to, 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 to be vulnerable and show who I really am? And by the way, you don't have to tear somebody. <laughs> in Jamaican mm. context. Yes. Okay. Because that is deceptive as well. Very. The key is just to go back to the basis. We never know who we really are until we discover God. Oh. When we know the manufacturer, we can know the product. And mm. when I discover who hold I on, am. Hold on, hold on. Is this Almira speaking? Hello, hello. <laughs> no, I'm just. I'm just no, but you're, you you're just you're just coming you're, you're coming across deep like your pastor would be. <laughs> you <laughs> can't know the product. I'm like you, bro. <laughs> you cannot and, and 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 hear me. You see, sadly, usually church does not facilitate authentic self discovery. Mm. Too often, church can be like a, 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 a photocopy machine. We want everyone to look alike and talk alike. And like, so we are comfortable 
But you see, the kingdom of God is, is, is multiplicity of people because there can be no unity without diversity. So we need a culture where people are um, willing and, uh, 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 and free to be themselves and to discover who they are. And this is only achieved by knowing God and then knowing who you are. You can know who can work with you. But if you don't know who you are, anybody is fine. Yes. And you have to be honest. You have to be honest, honest. with yourself. Honest. Yes. So, because... so, so, so for, for, sorry. When I b began to know who I am and what my call is, I knew what kind of woman I needed yeah. to partner with me. Yes. So example, my call to serve God and to make sacrifices. If I had a Christian woman who loved God, but is not willing to, 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 to serve and live the life of a pastor and, 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 and make my, sacrifices. It, it ain't going to work. Not care how much you love Jesus. She can tell you your sacrifice for God is not a sacrifice I want to make. Exactly. Unequally yeah. yoked. Unequally yoked. And yes. that begins with purpose. Purpose. Yes. Understanding why am I here? What am I called to do? Because it's like if I'm building a house, I know what kind of equipment I need to build the house. And if I'm clear where I'm going, I know what kind of partner I need because my destination should determine my association. Boy, oh boy. Listen, on Facebook, Claire Walker Brown says, yeah. it's, it's time for persons to teach about marriage and cut down on the prosperity teaching all <laughs> the time. Prosperity mm. is good, but married yeah. couples need help. And I think mm. if the church if the church looks beyond the, the, the couples ministry, for instance, and says to the, the, the majority audience, yeah. this is important for our church. And starts looking at this on a Sunday. Maybe people see that this is indeed more important than just going home and having sex and living without the intimacy necessary. Here's some more comments on Facebook. Yeah, um, they're they're saying so true. Forgiveness is the key in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this person says, "I'm married, and I can say, my God, the words I'm strong. Forgiveness is important. It matters." Um, one person. Angela is like underground rolling and laughing. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, man of God, I can tell you about bringing baggage into marriage. Mighty oh, God. God. Um, <laughs> so true, Sir God. Sean. You're seeing mm. image and you don't get the substance. Um, um, Sandra I... says, come mm. on now, Pastor Williams, you're talking the truth. Give me one more. Let me just see yeah. if I can find one, one more. I have several yeah. here. Possibly, I remember before me and you born, our Christian couples, is three months they speak to their pastor and get married. And some of those people didn't get any counseling, but they lived together until mm -hmm. death do, do them part. So, I so, think, no, you see, culturally, mm -hmm. yes. culturally, the world has shifted. For mm -hmm. example, if somebody turned on them TV, within five seconds, if they don't like what they see, they change it. So uh -huh. culturally... We are far less patient, Microwave. far less loyal, far less committed. So culturally, we are fighting a battle because marriage requires patience. Marriage requires loyalty. It requires commitment. And so we are fighting a battle in, in, in a cultural war, so to speak. Yes. But one of the things is that we have made marriage the destination. We have made marriage like it's this thing to aspire to be as if, as if you are not married, you are not valuable. And so if I pursue marriage to become valuable, then it, it affects my decision making. Okay. But if I know I am valuable, it informs my choice. So I know make better choices. Well, there's a, a lady. Um, yeah. I was about to say some things, but I'm not getting in trouble later now. <laughs> I, I, I just know that she have a whole bunch of messages that she probably want to share rather than... All right. Miss Nadine, are you there? Okay. So, um, let's continue because mm. um, the, the, the people are out there, Sean. Um, I touched on this with, with Dr. Dunbar earlier. Mm. There are so many inside the church searching. 
Um, and I, sometimes as a man, maybe maybe because I'm a man, I think different because we we men we we think think in two different ways. You understand? But yeah. I, I see people in the church, once they can't find who they want and they end up being there 65 years old alone. Uh, no no chance for intimacy. They've tried a few things, a few relationships. There, there's been failures. Um, what do you say to someone? Maybe they're not in their 60s yet, 40s, yeah. and, and, and they've been looking, but they can't find anybody there in their church. Uh, and they, they they want to have that life that they saw their parents have. They want to have that life that they, they know can be there with true intimacy. Mm. You know, I I want to first acknowledge their pain and just their difficulty. Because if, if there is, because some, some are quite is. happy, by the way. It is. It yes. is. You know, some, some mm. who have a desire and it's not being met, they go through hardship. But just a quick story, I was overseas, and this is in the pre-COVID season, and I went to a church, and I, and I spoke at a church, and I, and I just blessed uh, a woman there. And when I went back to the church sometime later, she was engaged to be married, and she was in her 70s. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Even I didn't believe, you know, I'm like, what? What I'm saying is, it's not over. There is always hope. And in expectation of hope, we prepare so when the time is right, God will reveal. And so if that is your desire still, and it is a God-given desire, then begin to prepare yourself in expectation or anticipation of God answering your, 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 your heart's desire. The word says, you know, delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. But don't allow impatience to make you grow disgruntled or even envy or be angry at someone else's blessing. You see, if you are faithful in another man's blessing, God will grant you your own. So what God often does in these times to encourage you, he shows you someone who is engaged and married to give you hope that he still works. He still does good things, but we interpret that as, as oh, poor me go into self-pity and become envious and then block the blessing. Yes. Rejoice with those who are rejoicing, man, and opens a door for God to bless you. One more question. Come on, may I talk fast because time kind of short, I know. Time is short. We, we, we're going to wrap up yeah. in after this question. Um, a couple in a relationship at the moment, um, the person listening today can identify that they are not yoked together. They're pushing yeah. in different directions. Um, what can you say to them today to rescue the relationship before destruction? Sometimes you have to go back to go forward. Go back to the beginning. What's the desire in your heart? What did God say to you at the beginning? Sometimes life happens and life distracts us from our purpose and what God said. So go back to the beginning. Rediscover yourself. Rediscover your partner again. Slow down and say, God, we are inviting you into the process. See where we made that misstep and help us to get it right this time. Now, this requires both couples to submit to. But every couple, no matter how long or how good we are, we need that time of refreshing that time off alone to begin again. Another question, another question yeah. from that statement. So I'm here, I'm listening to you. I acknowledge we're not equally yoked. Mm. Um, I, I hear what you say, but he or she may not be willing to do what mm. is necessary. Okay. But I've heard you. Mm. That no, that no is a, a different question and that might require some professional help. And hopefully you are in a house or church that can guide you through pastoral leadership and to help you navigate because those are tough choices. It affects people. Um, kids might be involved, but do not make a hasty de decision or even out of pain. Okay, 45 seconds. Give a prayer for all our listeners, those mm -hmm. who are in their relationships, those who need a mm -hmm. touch from God. 
Father, your word is truth. You are good, even in not so good circumstances. Father, we pray that a spirit of grace and wisdom shall rest upon your people. Lord, your word says people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Give them eyes to see, ears to hear, and a humble heart to obey your word because you watch over your word to perform it because you have made this principle established in the earth. Whatever we sow, that we shall reap and give them the right seed to plant that they might reap an awesome harvest in Jesus' name. Okay, Sean, we got to go. Um, how, can you, people get in, how can people get in touch with you? Touch with me. Oh, uh, Instagram, at saw, I believe. I'm also on Facebook, Sean A. Williams. All right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, man. Great time. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go. Gosh, uh, we will find a part two and three and four. Mm. And we will come back to help rescue the families in Jamaica and your relationships. Uh, it's 12 o'clock. It's time to go. This is The Rock. I'm Steve Blair. And thank you to Kathy Gale, our producer. And mm. as always, you can call love. Call me, 876-295-9141. And we'll work together to keep you going. God bless you. Have a great day. Goodbye. Blessing. Amen. And please have the numbers ready in case I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> because we have trouble. I have so many messages here to go through. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And of course, Dr. Dunbar as well. Thank you. And of course, just to remind you, our listeners, this was The Rock brought to you by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Healthy people, healthy environment. Huh? Sean, thank you very much. Yeah, man. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Blessings. Thank you. thank you, Kathy. Great to have you. You're now invited to listen bye -bye. to a prayer and meditation. Our partner for the month of December is Bishop Dr. Ronald